Thank you, that's understood. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Okay, understood. Thank you, that's long. Thank you, everybody, for coming. We're going to give it another. Um, we give it another two, five minutes. Let a few more people come in and we're going to get started. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming and make your meeting, your temple meeting, and becoming our uh, member to uplift fallen humanity. That's what we need. Um, more leaders. A lot of people, it's uh, a lot of followers, a lot of sheep out here. And uh, we come together to build and to proclaim our nationality. Uh, if you guys seen my Instagram, I posted a video on my Facebook. I posted a video of Rise of the Moors being released from prison or uh, jail from the Moors Consulate put together by one of the Moor brothers coming together as a body politic, marched down to the courtroom, put in paperwork, and got the Moor released. So it's power. It's evident of power of us coming together in unity. This is a call for unity. While we waiting on others to come, I'm going to get started with one of the speeches I want to give you guys today from the prophet. First, let me start off by saying all praises to Allah within me. The Savior in the universal Allah, which is the creator of all things seen and unseen. All praises and high perfect praises due to Allah. The second, uh, I want to give honors to Allah, Prophet Noble Drew Ali, who came and established the first Moorish Islamic organization or any Islamic organization in North America in 1913 AD with the Moorish Science Temple of America was founded to teach people their nationality and their divine creed. If you was with us last week, or, um, when you look at my YouTube, uh, channel we posted last week video dealing with what actually is nationality um we went in depth real deep in that of course you can always go deeper but um we went into the studies of what nationality was pertaining to a national free national government you have to be a part of a free national government to be considered to have a nationality. Nationality is the, the character and the quality of belonging to a nation and also pledging allegiance to a nation. So we spoke on this last week, or last meeting rather, Wednesday, where we uh, spoke about who do you pledge allegiance to? That's the magic question. You got a lot of conscious people in this conscious community with no nationality, even though they are conscious of their bloodline. Through my studies, I found out that uh, nationality deals with two parts. It deals with you being conscious of your bloodline, your indigenous roots, but also being um, conscious of your political status, which is 
pledging allegiance to a free nation state that's not um, tenants or not subject to any other nation state which the Morris Science Temple of America is. And so other other body politics. Um, when dealing with a free nation state or a free national government, everybody in that national government must have the same nationality. Or it's not a national government. The United States it's a corporate government. It was never set up to be a free national government. It was only for commerce and trade. And that's evidence of truth, Treaty of Peace and Friendship between United States and Morocco Empire. So just off that concept of what Noble Juali brought us, we can build off that. Do we have it all as in the Moist Science Temple of America? No. That's why we need leaders like me, you, and everybody else who's true leaders and have true race pride and love their race and who feel like their condition can be better. To come along, unite, and let's make our conditions better. Now I'm going to read a speech by the noble Drew Ali, the prophet, and it's titled, The Voice of the Prophet. I like this title because I feel like each and every one of us being leaders and members of the Moore Science Temple of America, we are the voices of the prophet. And that's very important because his voice has been buried. There's no audio recordings of the prophet. There's no videos or pictures too much of the prophet. But you got pictures and videos of uh, Tesla and Albert Einstein, these brothers during this time period. But you don't have a video or recording of the original Einstein, which was Noble Jali, who came and bring us the ancient science, more science, what's been known as um, Egyptian science. He brought us those five principles of the Maya. And he told us those five principles was connected to our five-pointed star flag. If you look up those five principles, love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, those are the same principles of the Maya, which is balance. So we came here to return the matriarch and the Maya science, the ancient Moorish science. So I'm gonna start off by reading this this, uh, this speech. The voice of the prophet. If you have race pride and love your race, join the Moorish Science Temple of America and become a part of this divine movement then you will have the power to redeem your race because you will know who you are and your forefathers were because where there is unity, there is strength. Together we stand, divided we fall. Come good people because I, the prophet, sent to redeem this nation from mental slavery, which you have now need every one of you who think that your condition can be better. This is a field open to strong men and women to uplift the nation and take your place in the affairs of men. If the Europeans and other nations are helping me, why not you? It is your problem. The Negro problem is being solved only as it can. And that is by the Morris National Divine Movement. If you have a nation, you must have a free national name in order to be recognized by this nation as an American citizen. This is what 
was meant when it said, Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and all things will be added unto you. That's by the holy prophet, Nova Jawali, Islam. So you can see uh, the state of mind that Nova Jawali was in before he was assassinated. Where he came to bring us through the Moors national and divine movement was to bring unity because with unity there's strength i was sitting in the, the courtroom and the federal court uh the judge asked me who are you with what nation are you a part of i couldn't answer that at that time but we can answer that now because we do have a nation we have a free national government that we can activate and we can use, and we can become a body politic and members of a existing body politic that's tied to our ancient state, our ancient forefathers, who was more bites. Before you got these so-called Indian tribes, we had ancient tribes. We had ancient civilizations. We come from the old max, who had government structures. All our governments had government structure into the 1800s. You can look this up in the Great Law of Peace Constitution that was made by the so-called Iroquois tribe, which the United States of America took their constitution from, along with other more science. That's why you have seven articles in the U.S. Constitution because they were studying the more science, which is the circle seven science. Islam. I see. Uh, I got a few questions. Uh, what is the YouTube page called? The YouTube page is called Zodiac Temple. And I'm going to type that in the chat. Now, if you join me by chat, just for you showing up, I got a special treat for you. For those joining by chat, I mean by uh, that's uh, joining by uh, the app. If you don't have the app, download the app where you can see the screen share. Because I'm going to screen share. Um, Islam, you're welcome, Zayi. Zayat, sorry if I'm mispronouncing your appellation. We're going to get into today how to operate a social security number as a Moorish American. As requested by one of the members, the brother John, on Wednesday's class, uh, suggested that this would be a great subject matter, and I, and I do agree. Uh, first thing we do when we come into science is uh, we create a new appellation or identity for ourselves that's tied to our free national name. Now this free national name, we don't have a social security number. We don't have a tax ID number. We don't have none of these things because we are free. So that's called the private side and when you're dealing with the straw man which is a creature of the constitution a creature of these government entities that would be considered the public side me myself I work well within the private and the public side but there's a lot of correcting to do 
It's a lot of correcting to do with your mindset first. But you have to understand what is the social security number? What is the public? What is the private? Before you can understand how this thing all works and how they fraud you. So first off, I'm going to break it down. What the social security number is. It's coined as a tax ID number. A tax identification number. The purpose of the social security number is to track you for taxes. And other th in other ways to identify you as being a straw man and committing birthright theft. Right through this instrument that was created uh, from Russia, the USSR. The USSR is the reason why you have an SSN. None of these things are instruments of America. These are instruments of Europe. To pay tri tribute to Europe is evidenced in the, the famous movie and book, Wizard of the Oz. When you have the famous Tin Man. The Tin Man is describing you more. The tax identification number is T I E N the 10 man. As long as he was not a human being, he was an artificial person. And so was any instrument tied to a tax identification number. So let's break down these tax identification numbers. You got three types of tax identification numbers. Mainly, you got the federal um, government issued tax identification numbers, which are nine digits. Now this is ancient geometry that they use, the more science, the science of the number nine. Because nine is the number of completion. So all these numbers have nine digits. Now, these digits are coded. The first type of tax identification number you have is the SSN, which is an acronym for Social Security number. Then you have the EIN, which is an acronym for Employer Identification Number. Then you have the TIN, which is an acronym for tax identification number. The SSN, Social Security number, is issued from the Social Security Administration, owned by the IMF, International Monetary Fund, which is owned by United Nations, which is owned by the Vatican. And we can talk about the Vatican in our next class and how that rat, rat, rabbit hole goes real deep. Now, you're dealing with the SSN number. You're dealing with what they call the debtor. Transmitting utilities. All debts are tracked through the SSN number. All, all, all um, criminal history, credit report, all these things are tracked through the Social Security number. We have evidence of that in one part of this. Hold on, give me one second. I'm seeing somebody else jumping in. Nobody else jumping in. Now we have evidence of this. When you arrested, or you were uh, apprehended, kidnapped unlawfully, without a warrant, of course, by the police department, the gangs of New York, they have a system to track you by your SSN number to see your, what they call public record or criminal background record or criminal record history. And this this place is tied to the FBI Federal Bureau of Investigation and it's called the NCIS.
ASI, National Crime Information Center. Now, the purpose for maintaining the NCIC system is to provide a computerized database for ready access by a criminal justice agency making an inquiry. Making an inquiry. Same thing they do on your credit report, isn't it? They run an inquiry to run your report. This is all public access. This is all on the public side. It says, in for the prompt disclosure of information in the system from other criminal justice agencies about crimes and criminals. The information assists authorized agencies in criminal justice and related law enforcement objectives, such as apprehending fugitives, locating missing persons, locating returning stolen property, as well as in the protection of law enforcement officers encountering individuals described in the system. So you can see right there how the criminal record is similar to your credit report as far as they have a system in the database of bureau called the, the Federal Bureau of Investigation just like the credit report has a, a, a bureau, credit bureau called Experion, and they go to these and make an inquiry to find out uh, certain information about the person tied to the SSN number. Okay? So all this going to lead me to a point. I'm making a point here. Okay? Let's break down the structure of the SSN before we can get it to the point I'm making. Because I'm going to show you the exact documents to move as a Moorish American national. The IRS forms, because we have well studied these. Now, the structure of the SSN, the Social Security number, breaks down in three parts. All right? The first three digits of the Social Security number before the dash. You notice how I got three dashes. So each one of these sections is the three parts I'm describing. And the first three numbers in the first section describe the state where the number comes from. Because this number describes you as a state resident. It puts you as state property. So it has to identify what state or what they might call, you might see your birth state. A birth is something that a ship does. Citizen is a ship. Citizenship. So they got you under the SS num number tied to a particular state, which is a colony. These states are not the landmass. And we will get in that in the later class about what a state is and what it is not. Just a, a general summary, a state is not the landmass. A state is a body politic operate on the landmass. The state of Texas, the state of Illinois, are foreign colonies to America. They are not American states because they are not nation states. Nation states means everybody got the same nationality as a part of the state. These states have different nationalities. They are corporate states set up by the Moors for the foreign Europeans and others to do business on our land. It's not. Now that's the first three numbers breaking down the state, now the, the middle section, those two numbers in the middle, that describes a time period when you was born. Not the actual year you was born, but another bracket that deals with certain amount of numbers or years that was born in this certain bracket. So if you have the middle numbers that's like seven, six, then that means you was probably born between a certain year, let's say for example, 1993 to 1973. You will fall in this bracket, just for an example. Okay, the last four digits is a sequence of numbers that's are random. These are your true identifying numbers. These are the true numbers that no one else would have. Now, the first two sections I mentioned, everybody has those. Everybody gonna have that same first three and those middle two numbers, 
that will have that fall that fall in the same category as you. The same exact category as you, the first five numbers will start off the same. The last four numbers are random identifying numbers that no one else will ever have. And that's tied to your straw name and your straw residence, which is what you call an address. It's really a residence tying you to the state once again as a state property because a resident is state property. Now we're going to break down for evidence what do those, free, those, those first three numbers, digits in your social security, which state goes to what? And if, it's, and, and if you don't think this is true, look up your social security number and the birth, your birth state as I read this out. So you will see the, the authenticity of this. Now, if your number start with 001 to 003, that state is New Hampshire. If you're dealing with 004 to 007, that's Maine. 008 to 009 is Vermont. 010 to 034 is Massachusetts. 035 to 039 is Rhode Island. 040 to 049 is Connecticut. 050 to 134 is New York. 135 to 158, New Jersey. 159 to 211, Pennsylvania. 212 to 220, Maryland. 221 to 222, Delaware. 223, 231, Virginia and West Virginia. 232, North Carolina. Now, I'm going to tell you something about those first sequence of states that I listed. If you go into the original 13 colors, you will notice that these first social security numbers are identical to the first original colonies. Letting you know you tied to the colonies by using these social security numbers. Islam. Now let's go further. So we got the whole list right here. 237 to 246 North Carolina, 247 to 251 South Carolina, 252 to 260 Georgia, 267 Florida, 268 to 302 Ohio, 303 to 317 Indiana, 318 to 361 Illinois, 362 386 Michigan, 387 to 399 Wisconsin. 400 to 407 Kentucky, 408 to 415 Tennessee, 416, 424 Alabama, 425, 428 Mississippi, 429, 432 Arkansas, 433 to 439 Louisiana, 440 to 448 Oklahoma, 449 to 467 Texas, 468 to 477, Minnesota, 478 to 485, Iowa, 486 to 500, Missouri, 501 to 502, North Dakota, 503 to 504, South Dakota, 505 to 508, Nebraska, 509, 515, Kansas, 516, 517, Montana. 518 and 519, Idaho. 520, Wyoming. 521 and 524, Colorado. 525, New Mexico. 526 to 527, Arizona. 528, 529, Utah. 530, Nevada. 531, 539, Washington. 540 and 544, Oregon. 545, 573, California. 574, Alaska, 575, 576, Hawaii, 577 to 579, Washington, D.C., 580, 584, Puerto Rico and Virgin Islands, 585, New Mexico, 586, Guam, Samoa, and Pacific Territories. Now you see how they got this already in categories. 
to tie you to their colonies. So when they describe you they, uh, as a social security number or you identify yourself as a social security number, you saying you were enslaved. The social security number is a slave number. It's a slave number. It's meant to be in debt for the debtor. So all your bills come in his name. They tie it all to this social security number. They go and show check and levy your wages off this social security number. Now, how do we counter that as Moors? See, once you come into your bloodline and status, you come into knowing that you nobility and you the creditor to their whole system. To the United States, through the treaty, we credit their whole system. And we got evidence of that. Treaty of Peace and Friendship, 1787. Uh, now, two ways we counter this. The first way we counter this is we use the social security number for credit purposes only, not to identify ourselves. So that's a, that's, that's a correction in the mind. This is a credit number that's tied to my state that's been what we would call usurped by a colony. This was usurped from us. Our whole estate was transmitted to a debtor when actually we the creditor. So we need to reverse this situation. So the first thing is becoming conscious of I'm the creditor secured by the treaty, which is the original security agreement. The national debt is owed to the most American nationals, the true American citizens. The Europeans are not Americans. So what we do, if you screen sharing, you get a treat to see the actual form template that I filled out to show you how to correct your social security number from being in a state of black, Negro, African American to being as the status of white and American Indian, which white man, sovereign and ruler to the land, American Indian is considered an indigenous people who are the Moors. And we can get into that in a further class who are the true Indians. So this SS file form is a social security administration form. We correct our status with this. Now, the EIN number and the TIN number is not from a social security administration. These numbers come from the Department of Treasury, the IRS, Internal Revenue Service. Now that's very important because these are coming from different entities. One is coming from the United States of America corporate government. One is coming from Russia, which is both of them the same entity in a way, but in the same in the same token, they different. And they used for different purposes. So we're gonna get into first with the SSC and the power we can do with this and correcting that. So with this application. You will fill it out as a straw. You will put your straw man name first, middle, and last. You will put the social security number associated with that straw. You will put the place of birth near Chicago, where I was from, because you never can be birthed inside the corporate state. And then you will put the state or foreign country. I put the Moore Science Temple of America because that's my state because I did a status, full status correction, proclaim and put power of attorney over this straw. Then you put your date of birth, which is for the straw, because we know a birth is something a ship do when it enters a port. And that's why you gotta get a passport and you have to have the birth certificate connected to that because these are all Admiralty and Maritime. We're talking about Admiralty and Maritime jurisdiction right now. These are two key terms if you're listening you need to be uh, researching. Admiralty. You're dealing with admiralty when you're dealing with the social security number. Okay, you can skip the rest of it. Put your uh, citizenship. 
Now, this is the most important part. This will be correct the citizenship. On the SS5 form, IRS, I mean, Social Security Administration, ask you citizenship. They only got four boxes. The first box is U.S. citizen, 14th Amendment, straw man. We know we are not the 14th Amendment U.S. citizen, so we do not check this box. Next box is legal allowed to work, legal alien allowed to work, excuse me. We are not necessarily legal aliens. We are non-resident aliens dealing with taxes, but we are not legal aliens. We are lawful aliens. It's a difference. We can get into that in a further class, but I want to drive this point home. A citizenship, we choose other. Okay? Why do we choose other? Because it's nothing that describes our citizenship. We are national citizens. Then you go to the box that say ethnicity. It says, are you Hispanic or Latino? We know Hispanic and Latino are both languages. A person cannot be a language. Race is the next box, number seven. Notice how they got race in the seventh box, numerology, circle seven science. So they ask you your race, select one or more. Your response is voluntarily. So you don't even have to put a race in here because it's voluntarily. But we correct the status by correcting it, by putting from black to, uh, they got black size African American, we put that to white. Why white, Mo? Because white means rule of the land. It's not man complexion. We have evidence. If you look this up and write this down, it's called the Free White Persons Act. Look up the Free White Persons Act. It deals with nationality, not, com not complexions. And it says the Moors are the free white persons. Number eight, we go to sex. You put male or female. Uh... Number nine, you can put your parents' name if you know it. They straw information, social security number attached to that. If you know it, if you don't know it, you don't have to put it. Um, 11, you put uh, yes for if you ever was given a social security number before. Uh, a social security card, I should say. If you never was given a number, the straw was given a number, you, was, you received a card. And that was never your car. It was their car. Because you look at on the back of the car, it says um, that if they tell you to return the car, then you must return the car. Is huh? Then we go to question 12, where it says, name shown on the most recent Social Security card issued for the person listing item 1. You'll put the full straw name again. 13, you'll put the date of birth of the straw man. Today's date, I'm going 14. 15, you put your phone number. 16, you put the address. 17, you will sign, but you will always sign all rights reserved. Is huh? 18, now this is the trick. You will put relationship to the person. It says, are you doing this for yourself? The next box says natural or adoptive parent. Next box says legal guardian. And the last box says other pacific uh, fire. Excuse my uh, pronunciation. So we put in that box beneficiary because you are the beneficiary of this number because this number is tied to an estate and a trust. This application is a legal document and it's binding. And it's not just an application, it's a contract. So in order to change the status of the Social Security number, if you want to deal in the public with the Social Security number still, then this is the form you need to be filling out. As long as you need to be filling out this form, SS5 form, in a manner I just described, if you want to still operate in the public for credit purposes, even though you're still moving as a Morris National. Now, what if you don't want to move like that? Then we got options on that. You don't have to move like that. You can actually terminate the social security number. Now let's go to that. Here's the form right here. You would get if you screen sharing, you can see this. It says the SSA, SSA 521 request for withdrawal application. 
because like I described to you, the application is the contract. You have the right to rescind any contract based on fraud. So you would fill this out on these basis. This is a very simple one page, uh, sorry, two page application. Doesn't ask many questions. Okay. You can terminate with the SSA 521 form if you want to detach from their system and you don't want to have anything to do with a social security number because you already got a bag or you already got your credit up and you, don't, you, you got a bag off of it or whatever the case may be and you want to detach. Uh, for the more that, that still want to get 100 k in credit, things like that, what you do is just correct the status. Now what you do at a job. All right, you corrected the status. Now you correct the status at the job. When they requesting these things, you get them. Uh, you don't have to submit a SS uh, form. You don't have to do an SS card, Social Security card. Uh, it's a trick to that though, and I'm gonna give you the trick to that today. It's a trick to getting a job without using a Social Security number. And the first thing you have to do is have the W-8 form. The W-8 form is an IRS form certificate of foreign status. Now, given you already had your nationality proclaimed, your trust done, your 9-8 number for these things, now you would be able to uh, put, uh, fill out this W-8 form the way we got it filled out right here. And if uh, you a member of the Moist Science Temple of America, then you can just hit me up and request um this these forms and I and I can email you these forms no problem. And I will be posting these forms uh, in the description of how to fill them out on my social medias exclusive exclusive for everybody following my social medias. Uh, that would be Lord Antoine Bay at the Instagram and Antoine Bay on the Facebook. Now the trick I'm going to give you today is how to get, how to get the, um, a job without necessarily giving up the social security number. Okay. It's six reasons. So six times that these government agencies or different entities might request for your, uh, social security number. Now, you are not obligated to give it to these entities in no way, shape, or fashion. Okay? Now, the trick when applying for a job is that you are not obligated to give these numbers to uh, any employer when you're filling out an application. Now, it's a, quick, it's a trick to it because they can deny you a job because they're not able to do a background check on you properly, right? In that NCIC system I told you on by the Federal Bureau of Investigations, right? So what the trick is to do is get them to offer you the job first. Once they offer you the job or inform you that they intend to hire you, then you can give them social security number or anything, or you can refuse it at that point because now they have already extended an offer to you, and they can't deny you based on uh, you not providing a social security number after they didn't intend to hire you. See, the trick is that they can deny you uh, for a job for any reason, but once they have intended to hire you, they cannot discriminate against your religious beliefs, national origin, sex, or race, or gender. So, the thing is, this is tied to your national origin, your nationality. You can work in your free national name without a social security number. You have that right. You see what I'm saying? But the trick is, when you're getting a job, let them offer you the job first. Now, that might be kind of tricky to get them offer you a job without the SSN. That's why we, uh, and through the Moore Science Temple of America, we have started foundations and institutions where we can hire more where you don't need an SSN number. You can come work for 850 Credit Team. You don't need an SSN number to work for us. You can work for Nation Freight Brokers 
uh, when you don't need an SSN number to uh, work for us. It's not. It takes finances to raise this nation. So as more as we still got to get our finances. So I'm trying to give you multiple avenues to still get your finances, even if you still went to a job. It's not. Now, when you're dealing with schools, that's the next time they might require an SSN number. Okay? Now, this is another time where you don't have to supply an SSN number. Only time you might run into a friction with this is when you're trying to go to college or some type of tuition-based school where you have to provide uh, financial aid. Now, financial aid is tied to you getting credit. So in order for them to run your credit and those type of things, they might need your social security number for that. But just to register in school, you don't need a social security number. You can use your free national appellation, given you already did your status correction and had the proper documents for that. Okay. Third way is at the doctor's office. Is not at the doctor's office. They might require you to run a, a social security number, uh, and that's another form of doing a credit check on you. More, you know what I'm saying? So you don't have to supply this number. I have actively done this myself. I have went to uh, uh, the first uh, instance too, uh, getting a job. I have gotten a job without an SSN number in the trucking industry. My first trucking job was out of, without an SSN number. And uh, that's another story, but uh, they actually required uh, no felonies and I was able to show them my corrected status and what the law was on felonies. And uh, we was able to not use my SSN number and we use the EIN number. Okay, and I'm gonna get into that next. Now, the, at the doctor's office, you can kind of do the same thing. You don't have to. Uh, you don't have to supply the SSN number, and actually, uh, they can sue you for. I mean, you can sue them, the doctor's office, for uh, refusing to, uh, you know, assist you or treat you. Um, because you didn't provide the SSN number. Same with a hospital, because hospitals are considered what you call public accommodations. So you might think it's a private hospital, but if it's serving the public, it's no longer private. It's a private and public side of everything, but that doesn't make it uh, private. What makes it private if it was in their own home and it wasn't serving the public. It was only serving private memberships, something like that. But anytime you got something that's not based on private membership, and it's out here to serve the public, it's called a public accommodation. So by it being a public accommodation, they cannot refuse or discriminate uh, to treat people based on their national origin, sex, religion, uh, gender, uh, or age. So uh, that's how you get around that at the doctor's office. You can just simply uh, refuse. Now when applying for government benefits, um, Um, the uh, when you're dealing with like government benefits, that falls under the Privacy Act of 1974. So you can refuse to supply this SSN number according to the Privacy Act of 1974. They can't deny you government benefits because you don't have the SSN number. And you can look that up right in the Privacy Act of 1974 uh, for further studies on that. Now, when booking your travel, that might be another time they ask you, you know, to supply a social security number. You're booking a hotel room, so a rental, uh, trying to get a rental car. Sometimes uh, they want to run a credit check on you, so those are for credit purposes. Uh, now, the trick to that is that uh, you don't have to supply that, but they can deny you. You know, based on that, by them not be able to run a credit check on you. So the trick is, you can use an EIN number and, and, and place it is. in these instances. You can rent cars through your business. You can get a business account, uh, get a business credit card, and then you can rent cars through the EIN number and do the business name. As long as the, uh, you know, the card uh, uh, has the business name or your name on there, and it matches the EIN, 
you know, uh, you'll be fine. The last instance is plan applying for like a, a credit card, more a mortgage or some type of uh, dealing with credit. You know, now you have multiple options when dealing with credit. You can use the SSN number, you know what I'm saying, or you can use the EIN number. Now, the trick is the SSN number is uh, when you're dealing with credit, it's uh, easy to build the score up fast off a of social security number. If, say if you had no score, you can actually uh, raise your score up um, within 30, 60 days by just adding simple trade lines to it. And uh, you know, you have a high credit score. But when you're dealing with um, not wanting to use that, you have that option. You don't have to use the SSN. You can actually just do everything through the EIN. That's a longer process. Like I say, you will have to build the business uh, bank account you have to uh, put trade lines on it, and it take uh, three to six months to start building it, two years to really establish and stand on its own, but after three to six months, you can start to get certain little credit cards and things like that under your EIN, which is the employee identification number. Now, uh, Moore's, we deal with multiple EINs. We deal with the uh, domestic EIN, what I like to call it, because it's a not foreign it's a regular EIN you would get for the LLC. So if you start an LLC, you would get an EIN, you will operate under the LLC. You can get unlimited EINs this way. You know what I'm saying? Now, another way we as Moist Americans deal with this, when we set up our status correction, we do what they call a trust. Now with the trust, we establish the EIN number on the trust, but we get a foreign EIN number because the trust is an entity and we setting it up as foreign of the United States without the United States. So what we doing is we setting up the EIN number. The EIN number in itself will be foreign. It's an international number. So it start with the 98 instead of the 8 number. It'll be a 98 EIN number. With the 98 EIN number, you have all the power to do these six things uh, that I just mentioned. You can go you know, apply for everything you need. You can um, apply for a job in your 98 number. You can register for the school doctor's office. You can get government benefits, book to travel, apply for credit cards, ETC. So you can do all these things um, with the proper knowledge on the proper procedures of doing these things, as long. So it all comes with study and it all comes with uh, knowing thyself knowing that you crediting the system, knowing that this system is a fraud system, it is human trafficking, it's based on the uh, Social Security Act, and that's 666, you can look it up, Social Security Act, subsection 666, the mark of the beast. That's what's dealing with the Social Security number, which is owned by the USSR. You can look all these things up for yourself. All these things are, are very real and um. Uh, as far as to correct. So this is the proper way that you will move with the social security number. Um, do we have any questions on the line? This is the time I'm gonna open up the floor for uh, all questions right now. Let me know if you got any questions. Um, like I say, Send me an email if you need these documents sent to you, and um, I'll let you know. I'll send it to you. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll send it right to you. Okay. So, uh, if we don't have any further questions, I want to thank everybody and give honors to everybody who came on this call. Uh, thank you guys for coming. Uh, Sister Nicole, John, Zayad, Bernard. Somebody said they had a question. Go ahead, ask your question. Yeah, go ahead. The floor is yours. All right. Um, you claim that Moore is not a company. You can sue the docking office for um, um, having them, you know, you denying them to give you the, your uh, social security number. 
Oh yeah. It was now, I wanted to I wanted to experiment on that. I just wanted to ask a follow up question to that. Now what if they say that they can't treat you if you don't if your child or you do not have the proper vaccination? Because I just had a son, he's four months, he went to a clinic and you know, they see, they saw him and, and checked him out, but she said they couldn't see him any further because he, uh, you know, obviously he refused to get any sort of vaccination whatsoever. Mm-hmm. I just felt like it was it was kind of you know it was it was discriminatory in a way, and I was wondering if there is something that can be done. Uh, absolutely. To, uh, you know, that's already done. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. It's long. Absolutely, you definitely have a uh, remedy there. Uh, anytime they refuse you medical treatment um, based on your uh, religious or conscious belief to not be vaccinated, then they definitely are liable for discrimination. The problem is, is that uh, by you not coming in with the right political status, um, they can get away with that until you uh, tie yourself to a... Um, Basically, a body politic like the Moorish Science Temple of America is a religious therapeutic government. So uh, we have religious protected rights. So uh, based on you being part of that entity, uh, the Moorish Science Temple of America, you come in there and show them that you uh, would uh, like we we give religious exemption cards. So you can show them that you're exempt from the vaccination. Also, you can send them. Uh, 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 injunction uh, letting them know on, uh, which is a form of an affidavit uh, affidavit of truth sworn and notarized you send that to them certified mail uh, before you get that to be proactive you know what I'm saying letting them know and getting them notice to the directors uh, that in a legal department that you know you're not required to vaccinate See, most people are required to vaccinate. It is mandatory for U.S. citizens to vaccinate because they are property of the state. But once you become a foreign national, you are not required to vaccinate. And um, the condition of a parent falls on the condition of the child. So once you correct your status as the parent, the, the, the status of the child automatically is corrected. I hope that answered your question, Mo. Yeah, definitely. I appreciate it as well. As long. Is, is that a both parent or just one parent? Uh, whoever, uh, really it's one parent, but it's whoever the, the child is in custody of. As long. Because what it happens is to defend your child or proclaim the nationality for the child, every time you file paperwork for the child or fill out some application, you would do it in a free national name of the child. So, for instance, say if we had to register the child to the school, now what is a register? Register is transferring ownership and appointing new trustees over your estate. So what you would do is you would let them know uh, with your paperwork that the, the straw man, the child, is already registered to your foreign trust. And you will have power of attorney over that. I did that with my son when he was living out here in Texas. Uh, let the school know he was uh, under my power of attorney. And, uh, you know, he was getting into certain troubles and things. They wasn't able to do certain things they was to other students, like uh, arrest them. Like, my son got... Uh, into some trouble and they wanted to arrest them and uh, they called me and of course you know I didn't consent you know and by me not consenting then they wasn't able to treat him as a US citizen so it's all on the parent who got custody or whoever gonna be speaking as the authorized representative or guardian for that child I hope I answered your question that's all Any more questions? Floor is um, open. Is is this gonna be a recording? Yeah, I, I record. I got a video recorded of the whole thing. I didn't I didn't record a uh, 
the screen share. I should have recorded the screen share, but I didn't. But uh, I can send you the forms if you need the forms. And if you need a discrimination form, uh, let me know. Because uh, the FBI has a discrimination process. If anybody discriminates on their national origin, religion, sex, gender, race, you know, uh, that's discrimination. And then you can file a claim with the FBI against any entity that's doing that. But the first thing is you have to be a part of the nation state or some type of religious organization. And that's why we set up the Moya Science Temple of America, because then you can have a grand sheet vouch for you. And when you ain't just by yourself out here just saying something, uh, you're not really living what you're saying. You can actually live what you're saying. That's the whole point of tying a temple to the uh, government is because it gives it religious protection and also governmental powers at the same time. Islam. Do other nationalities and other people, let's say like the Jews, do they follow this same sort of uh, movement? Like, do they follow the same sort of uh, things that we do? Is that why they're able to do so much uh, in the world of finance and banking and real estate and things like that? Do they kind of do the same thing? They tie themselves to their Jewish God or whatever it is. Yeah, Islam. If you notice all uh, what you call the Jewish communities, it's definitely tied to uh, their own uh, religious uh, beliefs and uh, their own temples and things and churches like that. Uh, most uh, most Jews are uh, Kazarkians. So when you when you dealing with Jews, you dealing with a class of people who are not actually Jews, but they have formed a, a, a body politic, and they have stolen the birthrights of the Moors, because the Moors are the actual Jews. The Hebrew is where the Jew come from, and the Jews no letter J before fifteen twenty four. So the Jews actually are the Zionists, and the Zionists are basically uh, Spanish uh, Inquisition that uh, been stealing our birthrights. Now, when dealing with the, the, the status and how they moving and doing things, they are the ones who actually set up the banking system. They are the Federal Reserve Bank. The very Jews that you call the Jews are the Federal Reserve Bank. So when it comes to credit, Things like that, they already got the upper hand because they the bank, they giving out the credit, which is a violation of Article 1, Section 8 of the U.S. United States of America Constitution that says Congress can only give out credit. So the Federal Reserve Banks are not Congress. So when you look at the Jews, you have to look into the history of the Kazarkians. And then when you look up the Kazarkians, you will see that Hitler was uh, exterminating the Kazarkians but in history books, they call them the Jews. But in actuality, these people are not Jews. That's why the book of Revelation uh, in the Holy Bible, uh, it says it right in there that uh, it's people that call themselves Jews who are not Jews. And this is what it's meant, modern day terms. This is what it's meant, that you have these people who call themselves Jews who are ruling the world, and they are using... Uh, to, to answer your question, yes, they are using these procedures uh, correctly to benefit from, but the thing is, they are withholding this information from the masses. How are they withholding the information? Because you don't get none of this information through the schools. You don't go to no public school or college school that's going to give you proper education on the SSN number or the credit system, or the TIN number, or EIN, and what these things actually mean, who they tied to, who they come from. And these are uh, important instruments. They so important, most mothers remember by heart they child social security number by heart. And most humans, probably 90% of us, all know our social security number by heart. So that's how much they done tied us to these uh, instruments and got us uh, wrapped our status, our mind, being mental slavery.
And uh, one part of coming out of mental slavery is wrapping your mind is like, I can operate in this world without this SSN number. You know, human beings are not born with SSN numbers, tax tax numbers. You know what I'm saying? Taxes are going to the the, uh, the crown, which are the Vatican, which is the uh, the Queen Elizabeth, the royal family, and it's also the Federal Reserve Banks uh, moving with the uh, the Bar Administration. That's all the crown. That's the Vatican. I mean, not the Vatican, but that's the crown. So. Uh, when you're dealing with hospitals and things like that, they might say, yeah, you can't do this and that. But once you start moving as a national, as a Moorish American, then your status changes. So that means that the condition of these things changes. The way you are non-obligated to do certain things. Certain people get exemptions, but Moors, we have non-obligations. We don't need exemptions. We don't need a state to say you're exempt from getting the vaccination because we already have a non-obligation. That's already been um, agreed to by their forefathers when they agreed to the First Amendment to be uh, enforced on themselves. The uh, First Amendment says that you have the right to religion and the exercise of your religion and no law can forbid your religion or the exercise of your religion. And when you look up in law, what religion mean? In law, religion means your conscience. So that's already been secured, protected. We have security in that. So once you go into the hospital, you get to talking about your religious rights and your free national rights and your birth rights, and then you see how the conversation change. And if they further, and if they further violate that, then yes, you have room to sue them for those grounds of discrimination. I hope I answered your question. Yeah, you did. Appreciate it. That's all. That's all. Anybody got any more questions? The floor is open. No question is a bad question. We're here to build from scratch, from start one, whatever you're confusing at, whatever level you want, let's start there and let's build. Every 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 meeting we're gonna be building. You know, this is free consultation right now. Other more is gonna charge you a hundred dollars an hour for this information. I'm giving you in depth uh, uh, information in the in documents. More is charging a hundred dollars an hour for this. But all I'm charging you is to pay attention and be a dedicated, faithful member of the Moore Science Temple of America, which is established for you anyway. If we don't have no more further questions, I'll close the meeting. Okay, we'll close the meeting. Uh, stand with me. Uh, we're going to say the Moore American prayer. Uh, five fingers to the left. Two fingers to the right, together, feet together, pointing 45 degree angle, facing the east. Allah, the Father of the universe, the Father of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Allah is my protector, my God, and my salvation by night and by day. Through his holy prophet, Drew Ali, amen. Islam, thanks for coming to your meeting. Uh, I appreciate it. If you need any documents, hit me up. Next meeting will be Sunday. Uh, we will be there at 12 p.m. early Sunday. Um, let me know. Uh, we're going to get further into uh, another subject matter. If you got any suggested subject matters, let me know before Sunday, and we can probably dive into it. Um, like I say, this is an open floor consultation all day. Um, thank you for coming. Go out and spread the word about nationality and save yourself. Get yourself together. This is a movement for yourself to save yourself. Noble Dwight Lee brought us the everlasting saving power to save ourselves. We can't save the world. The world got to save themselves. But now that you here, you conscious, and uh, you are the next sheiks to, uh, to lead the people and your family. Uh, go get you a copy of that Circle 7 Quran. 
the one-on-one -on -one questionnaire, those are secret keys. Those are secret lessons that you need to know to put your house in order and put yourself in order and save yourself with these instruments, along with you getting a Black's Law Dictionary and learning uh, jurisprudence and, and different laws like that. So thank you for coming. Peace and love to all the Moors. Um, go in peace. Islam. Islam.